Hello, I'm Ryan F9. This is a Biltwell Gringo, and today we find out how safe retro helmets really are. Oh, what a wonderful day to destroy something beautiful. The Biltwell Gringo is famous for capturing that classic style of the 1970s. It's hard on the outside, soft on the inside, and there's not a vent, a cowl, a spoiler, a visor, none of that modern mumbo jumbo anywhere in sight. For such a basic bucket, the $200 price tag is perhaps not as basic as it could be, but even still, if you have a CB750, a beard, and a flannel shirt, odds are you have one of these too. Our first test is waterproofing. Well, this is gonna suck. So the Gringo ain't exactly ship shape. I mean, the shell just has a single opening, but whoa, is it ever a big one. So failing grade for waterproofing, and that's gonna bring us on to the soundproofing test. Wind noise will be supplied by the kind folks at Pilonis fans, and road noise will be supplied by the 1970s, since that's the only language our Gringo understands. <laughs> So we recorded a peak of 100 decibels inside the Gringo. When we ran this test outside the Gringo, we hit 104 decibels, meaning we have succeeded in canceling a pitiful four decibels. Not very good soundproofing. Oh, Gringo, 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 how did we get here? Already in Rambles Corner and not a single passing grade to show for yourself. What comes next ain't gonna be easy either. We shoot pointed penetrating pellets at 500 feet per second to test puncture strength. An ABS shell in this helmet needs to stop three rounds or better to pass. It's chipping like crazy. I mean, the uh, fashionable part of that shell seems pretty fragile, but the safety layer underneath, we haven't got through it yet. This is the all important third shot. Ooh, it's pretty deep. We should probably take a look at that one. I don't think I see EPS from yet. I think we should take a closer look. It's funny, this stuff is ABS, um, and it almost doesn't even feel solid. It's almost like a putty or something, <laughs> like a really, really stiff putty. And uh, I think the flexibility of it is letting it absorb a lot of these impacts. Yeah, I think I see EPS foam. Okay, finally done. <laughs> Seven shots, it's amazing. My arm's tired, let's go verify this. Yes, okay, I see a tiny bit of EPS foam we in the bottom of that. Um, this was way thicker than I thought it'd be. Well done, passing grade shell protection. Now, we normally run the exact same puncture test on the face shield, but whoa, the Gringo doesn't have a face shield. No matter though, I have commandeered one off another Biltwell helmet, since a lot of people choose to actually add shields to a helmet like the Gringo. I'm trying hard to give it a chance here, but damn if this ain't one of the thinnest polycarb visors I've ever seen. I'm not sure if it'll be enough. All right, let's take a closer look. If it failed this one, then it's, it's the pass-fail line, so we better make sure. So we're not quite through by a hair. Um, I think it's definitely gonna fail on the next shot, but it's made it through three, so it's gonna end up being a pass. And we're through. <laughs> so we're right through on four shots. Same as the Shoei Neotech, same as the Icon Armada. It's passing grade. Now, we're off to the batting cage to test impact and abrasion resistance, and this should actually be interesting. See, this is an ABS shell, and that can be cured two different ways. If you do it at low temperatures, you get really solid impact and abrasion resistance, but if you do it at high temperatures, you get a sexy, glossy finish and a pretty good heat resistance. I wonder which way Biltwell did it. So you can see the crackling all around here. If there's one thing we've learned already today, it's that the cosmetic layer of the Gringo is a little bit fragile, but what about the safety layer? Oh yeah, now Brian thinks he has more than a 50G headache. Maybe Boatwell will do better around back. Huh, that's kind of surprising. It's a pass. Have a look. Oh no. Looks like Biltwell might have valued their trendy glossy finish over impact protection after all. So tripping the stickers on two out of three impacts 
is going to give us an overall failing grade for impact protection. Now next we're on to abrasion resistance. And last time one of you commented that the grit and speed of our belt sander would be a relevant thing to know which it is. So this is 40 grit, extra coarse to approximate asphalt, and the thing spins at 19 kilometers an hour. A nice gentle slide. So we scraped right through to the EPS foam in a measly 36 seconds. That is way less than our one minute standard. Definitely a failing grade for abrasion resistance. Now the problem is we kind of saw earlier with the puncture test is that this ABS shell is a little bit pliable, a little bit malleable. And when it actually got heated up under the belt sander, it started coming off in chunks. It was actually bendable in here. Um, and so big hunks started coming off and we just got right through to the foam in no time. Now this is Golf Town. It's a great place for testing chin bar strength and the worst place in the world to be a watermelon. Unlike a lot of modern lids, the Gringo actually has no EPS foam behind the chin bar. There's just a thin layer of quilted padding and an even thinner layer of hopes and dreams. And the idea behind this is that it allows the helmet to sit closer to my face so that the whole design looks closer to the original 1970 Bell Star, and therefore the babes will want to squeeze closer on the back of my cafe racer, or something like that. And you can see already the damage exterior and to this bottom ring as well here just came right apart. That's not good. And look, I mean, we put a crack straight through the ABS layer. Um, so that's not good. I mean, having no foam, EPS foam behind your chin bar, I think is going to turn out to be a bad thing. Yeah, look at our watermelon, right? This is a fair amount of damage, more than we typically see. So, I mean, thin chin bars look cool, guys, but fashion is pain. So a failing grade for chin bar strength brings us to heat resistance. And for the first time today, I actually expect this to go well. You see, the ABS shell is certainly glossy and it's not all that impact resistant as we found out. So that probably means it was cured quite hot, in which case it has a high heat resistance. And yep, we're not having a super easy way to get through there, although it is sustaining a burn by itself. That's new, we don't normally see that, that this is actually just burning by itself. Uh, so that might just screw what I just said, forget about that. But the other thing about the Gringo, it doesn't have any vents, so there aren't any ways for me to cheat, really, and easily get the flame into the flammable EPS foam down here. I'm just going on one of our crackles from earlier. Doesn't look like I'll get fire through there, but this is sustaining a burn. I'm really surprised about that. We don't see that very much. Of course, it's really easy to get at the foam padding, since there's not a face shield on this helmet to go through, so we can go with the foam padding in here. Yeah, that'll, that'll burn a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. Foam is always just uh, quite keen to burn. Always the case. EPS foam now, it's always the fun part. Yeah, in general though, I'm surprised. This is the first time we've seen where the shell will actually just sustain a burn by itself, more or less, and, uh, and that's sort of unusual. So the Gringo was not that heat resistant. And that's gonna bring us to Fortnite's ninth test, which is build quality. We always ask the question, what still works? But in the case of the Gringo, I mean, not much really had to work in the first place. Yeah, I've still got five snaps on here if we wanted to throw a bubble shield on that. Um, I've lost a little bit of the trim, but not too bad. Um, there's still a big hole to look out of in the front, and the double D-ring on the bottom is still there. It's kind of a cheeky way to pass build quality, but hey, touche bit well. If you don't put any moving parts on your helmet to begin with, then there's not much that can go wrong, is there? Fine, fair enough. So, totaling it up, we have one, two, three. A remarkably terrible three. Three out of nine, definitely the worst score we've seen so far on the Fort 9 leaderboard, down there below the Icon Armada and the first gear Katmandu. It was a wonderful day to destroy something beautiful, but as it turned out, something beautiful is not so wonderful at getting destroyed. Join us next week when we see how much safer leather jackets are than textiles. Until then, take care.